Yo, I don't want to hear y'all complaining about Ubisoft at all for the foreseeable future, because let's be real here, they cooked. Ivory Tower, they cooked. I know I'm rather different in the kinds of things that I look for in a racing game. Most people are looking for things like PvP racing, car collection, or customization. But if I am playing a vehicle-centric game, my bread and butter, the thing I am going to be spending dozens to hundreds of hours doing is just driving around in free roam. And if that world doesn't feel authentic, then I am not going to enjoy it. But I can say with certainty that Motorfest Maui ticks off all of the boxes to genuinely be a road trip simulator. It manages to iterate upon everything that we saw in the mainland versions of the crew, and it does so on a single island, really. Like, this whole video is just gonna be me gushing about it. I hope y'all realize that. Anyway, let's get to it. I loaded up the game this morning, and to my surprise, there was actually no system-based update. It was all done server-side, and that's probably why it took so many hours. It took almost eight hours to update, but let's be real, it was well worth the wait. Basically, once you're in, there's a new freeway spur connecting to Honoluma Beach, then a roundabout, Corkscrew Bridge, and then you're essentially on either the east side of Maui or the west side. There is a loop freeway which essentially covers the entire island by crossing in on itself at key junctions, and crisscrossing the interior of the island are a literal slew of mountain roads leading up to a caldera lake and a literal active volcano. There is so much open road here compared to the real world island of Maui, but what really blows me away is the seamlessness of it all. And that's really because this time around, Ivory Tower was a lot more focused on the engineering aspect. Now that might sound a bit weird, but hear me out. Really, the largest problem that I had with Oahu is that it wasn't really done according to NHTSA code in any way, shape, or form. Almost everything was at grade with either T or cross junctions and, say, a roundabout here and there. The only ramp interchanges on the entire island are in Honolulu, and they are essentially half interchanges anyway. And Interstate H3, Kaneohe Freeway, really only has one almost missable intersection along its route, and is really just a loop road that connects to Interstate H1 at both ends. The decision to not have it end in, you know, Kaneohe, was really a strange one, let's be real. But Maui fixes that. It brings diamond interchanges back to the game. And not only that, these interchanges are actually to NHTSA code like they would be in, say, the Need for Speed games. Like, the ones in the Crew 2 aren't even a code half the time. And more than that, every single one of them has an overhead sign. What a concept! There's also intersections built into some of the tunnels which crisscross the island. Now, they're far from perfect, but it's better to have them than to not, because it makes the freeways less closed off and more actually useful. And probably the best part of all of this design schema is that freeways, expressways, and boulevards are all built with center medians, many of which have cross-traffic dual intersections, which again is close enough to NHTSA code to get a passing grade. This is what the crew needed to be all along. Every racing game has something to it. If it's Need for Speed, it's either cops or car customization, or sometimes both. If it's Forza, it's collecting cars that you'll probably never drive anyway. But the crew was built as a spiritual successor to Test Drive, and it was built to be a world where you drive for hours at a time with no real destination. That is why I use it for the bulk of my road trip talks. But the biggest flaw that I've always had with using this game as a road trip simulator is it often lacks that much needed consistency. Like, roads in the Crew 2 often terminate in weird places, they transition into unmarked paths with no striping, no light fixtures, no nothing. And it makes the world feel like it was thrown together with scotch tape, and it's not true to form. And if nothing else, it just never aged well. There are so many times where I wish I could use something like NFS Payback for road trip talks, because the aesthetic mirrors real-world NHTSA code as applicable to the state of Nevada. 
driving Fortune Valley and the outlying areas feels a lot like what I'm used to when I drive in, say, Reno in real life. It feels like it's capturing the look and feel of the real world. Though sadly, payback is limited by a lack of a cockpit view, and also the UI being a complete distraction while driving. But in driving Maui and the Crew Motorfest, I feel like I am driving in a real-world aesthetic, thanks to all the changes that were made. Just getting in a car and looping around the island a few times, it feels like you're traveling a lot farther than you actually are. And that doesn't even get into all the biome changes. Seeing the bamboo forests, the volcanic mountain passes, there is just so much geographic diversity that it's like being back in the crew and traveling in a straight line from California to Texas by passing through the Sierras, then Red Rock Canyon, and then going all the way to the Florida swamps before doubling back into Dallas. It is that level of diverse. But I would say it's not all a perfect picture. There's one problem, and it's kind of staring Ubisoft in the face now. It is that none of these changes have yet been made retroactive to Oahu. Once you get out of Honolulu, the island of Oahu has always felt very rural and sometimes very samey across the board. And the sheer density of Maui makes it feel more urbanized than Oahu ever did. Bear in mind that Maui is actually over 100 square miles larger than Oahu in the real world. And given that Motorfest uses a 1 to 9 scale, it means that Motorfest Maui is about 10 square miles larger than Motorfest Oahu, but that's not even counting the outlying islands that were also added. But real world Maui does not have the kinds of urban sprawl that Motorfest Maui does. Kahului is about the size of Wahiawa, and Kihei is about the size of Haleiwa. And outside of those two communities, Maui IRL has very little. But so far, Maui in Motorfest feels like more. My hope with Season 6 and beyond, and I know that we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves here, would be to see some retroactive development of Oahu, adding signage to Oahu's freeways, adding an interchange or two on Kaneohe Freeway, which should be doable without compromising any event race lines and maybe getting rid of some of the many, many farms and orchards in favor of bringing communities that were overlooked during development. Mililani is a sizable community. It could be added. Marine Corps Base Hawaii on the east side of Kaneohe should be added with a freeway of its own because that's how it is in real life. But really, even if we don't get these changes, I am not gonna be complaining because to be fair, I am going to have a lot of potential road trips to run on my channel for essentially a long, long time. Thank you so much for watching.